Welcome to another episode of Star Citizen on The Basics. In this series I am covering the... basically the principal theory behind dogfighting and how to control your ship, and in this episode I will be talking specifically about how to get the best control over your ship so that you can control exactly where it's moving, when you want to, and how you want to. So, in this episode, uh, in my last episode, I talked about why you should always be strafing and how you should always be strafing. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. The link will be at the end of the video and in the description. And uh, in this episode, I will be talking about my controls and why you should have a similar control setup if you're using mouse and keyboard. Uh, so this video is primarily for people using mouse and keyboard, but uh, people who are not using mouse and keyboard should also be able to find something useful in this as well. So, what are my controls? Basically, my main point is that you should be separating your throttle from your strafing keys. So, what this does, you can see right now I'm flying straight forward at 220 meters per second despite not being decoupled. So, now I'm decoupled, now I'm coupled again, I'm still flying at the same speed, and I can change it at will. And now my throttle is up, and I can also not be touching any keys because my throttle's up, and I'm still traveling straight forward. This gives you a lot of new control over your ship that you would not otherwise have, and uh, I will now show you why. So basically, the main thing is, if you separate your throttle from your strafe, then you can mostly use strafe, in which case you can actually fly strafing forward, to the side a bit, coming back, Going backwards, to the left, and forward again. So, by having full strafing, you can actually pull off a few more interesting maneuvers, which I will cover in a minute. Now, another good thing about this is you can actually change and multiply how much forward thrust you have. So, when you're using your throttle, you can do this, this to an extent. So, you'll see... Now, if I throttle up all the way, this is how most people are flying, or maybe they, they would manage their throttle, but you'll see it has the same effect. Where if, let me fly out into open space here, if you're flying straight forward and you add in strafe to the left, then you can see, if I look over, my TVI, the uh, true velocity indicator, is right there, right? And by lowering my throttle, I can actually decrease my forward vector and travel more laterally, and then I can increase my throttle again. But basically I'm stuck at this 45 degree angle. If I wanted to go, if I wanted to have that TVI anywhere between here and here, it is basically impossible without switching to going completely forward, if you are only flying with throttle. Adding a full set of strafing keys along with your throttle allows you to control both and get the most out of your ship. So you'll see here, I'm going to start by just strafing to the side. And I'm going to increase my throttle slowly. And you'll see again, I get to that 45 degree part there. Now, if I, because the strafing is the same strength as your throttle, if I then go to zero throttle and I hold forward strafe as well, then I'll still be at that 45 degree angle. But now, if I increase my throttle, I can get anywhere in here that I want as well. Up until here, which is about, mm, I want to say about 20, 20 degrees from the center. And I can also fly straight forward. And this is perfect. Basically, this will mimic a dual joystick setup in terms of controlling your lateral strafe. It basically makes it analog, uh, which is really good for doing different maneuvers. So there's a very common maneuver called the skidded attack courtesy of the Legacy Instructional Series, which basically what you do is this. You, or you have full forward, full throttle, and uh, full forward strafe, as well as uh, lateral strafe. And this gives you that nice 20 degree uh, approach angle that you really want. So with this, you're not too far from your target as you pass them, and you can use some boost and keep your guns on the target. Right? So another thing you can do with the separated throttle and strafe, basically you'll be you'll be throttled up, 
You'll be doing you'll be going into one of those skidded skidded attacks by throttling both. And you'll be coming towards this, and then you'll throttle down, you go straight into a full lateral, and then you can start going backwards because you also have that backwards strafe sign, right? And that way you can keep your guns on target while kind of jousting your enemy, but not really. Not in a way that you have to stop and turn around. So most pilots, they'll be full throttle ahead. Maybe they won't even be strafing. They'll try to get some shots and then they have to turn away. Oh. And then they got to turn around again. Maybe here they'll strafe. And then they come back and they do another pass, right? But with this, you can throttle down. Go past, keep your guns on target everything, and basically have a lot better control over your ship. This also allows you to retreat from an enemy while still facing them without going into coupled mode, which basically, if you do that, it's a lot harder to control really what direction you're going, um, because most people, when they decouple, they just kind of let it sit, and then they're like, oh well, I guess this is the direction I'm going. Although you can fly while you're decoupled. A last thing, which is also incredibly useful, I'm not quite sure about one of them, but definitely having a button, having a button that's right at your fingertips that allows you to come to stop. So for me, I double tap S. That puts my throttle at zero, and I could even use boost to stop. And that is one of the most useful things, not for if I'm about to crash as much, but as you saw there, as I was, wherever they are, as I was going past those platforms, and I also have one to throttle up all the way, and that's the one I'm not quite sure about, but definitely for throttling down, because as I go past, I might want to just stop throttling, and then I can immediately start going backwards, right? If I did not have that, then what I would have to do, if I was throttled up, going into a skidded attack, then I would have to come by, decrease my throttle, and then continue. And while that is possible, it's just a lot more to think about. It's a lot easier to just turn it off, and also, it's quite convenient. So that's basically it for my keybinds, and uh, if you're curious about what my specific keys are, they are a little strange, but basically all that you need to do is separate your throttle from your strafe. So what you're going to do, let me show that, is you press escape, you go to options, go to keybinding, and you go to advanced controls customization. Then you go down to flight movement. You click on it, scroll down to the throttle section, there we go. So throttle minimum and maximum by default is backspace, but as I said, that's far away from my hand. I don't want to take my hand off of the keys that I'm using to control my ship, and this is all about getting the best control out of your ship. All right. So I've set throttle zero to double tap S, and how you do this, you, you uh, double click on it, you'll press S, you'll say OK, and then if it doesn't automatically set to double tap, then you press it again, and you press Y, as it says right here. Yeah. Uh, same thing for throttle max. I'm not sure about this one. You can try it out. But uh, definitely for stopping is useful. You could also use a different key. Uh, for throttle up, I have it bound to button 5 on my mouse. And before you freak out at me, let me explain. I have it bound to the, the side button on my mouse because I've noticed really the only finger you're not using when you're playing Star Citizen is your right thumb, right, because there's really nothing bound to those keys except countermeasures, but those are also bound to G, and uh, I'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, and then also your left pinky, your le for me, I use the left pinky to throttle down, uh, which is here, on caps lock. And the reason for that is because you don't use your left pinky as much. Uh, you can use it for boost, but at a time when you're throttling down, you're not going to be using boost. Right? And if you really need to stop quickly, you can just use the double tap S and then boost with the left pinky, uh, which is shift. But uh, this way, I basically get two free keys that I can press at any time because those fingers are not busy. Uh, so you can try this out. You can set it to something else. Definitely set it to something else if it's more comfortable for you. But the point is separating it from strafe. All right. And uh, the reason I don't use my pinky that much because you might say, oh, but you can you can strafe down with your pinky as well. I never strafe up and down, I always strafe laterally, and uh, if you're curious about why, that is basically what I covered in my last video, uh, which is the mechanics of strafing and how to use it to your advantage. So that basically wraps up my video. 
So at this point, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more content coming up soon. This thin profile, they see this.